the into the new book yeah the sure. cancer code yeah sure. i've never actually I, I didn't read it yet but i've never actually saw that one day someone would actually tell me that there is a code for cancer because the the i think the point our the image we all have about this disease is that it is like we don't know where it comes from how it comes how it happens why it happens it just happens so the 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 title of the book the cancer code actually entails that you have a key to this disease yeah it's, a, it's an it's interesting like book it's a music little bit to my ears. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a little bit different than some of the other things i've written because it's not just about sort of nutrition um and you know obesity and type 2 diabetes there's some about that especially about insulin the link between insulin for example obesity type 2 diabetes and cancer it's actually very strong and it's not something that we used to talk about a lot but it's actually very consistent um but it's a it's mostly a book about sort of how cancer develops and a sort of the paradigms of cancer that is to say what we think about cancer because we used to think about it as the sort of genetic disease yeah. um now we've sort of moved past that and it's really a book uh, the way we think about cancer is more in terms of an evolutionary disease so it's a disease of how these sort of cancerous cells evolved in our bodies and what are the forces that promote the development of the cancer and what are the ones that sort of lower the risk of cancer so it's 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 you know it's an interesting um you know because the, what we think about cancer has changed so much in the last sort of 10 years um and i think a lot of people are still stuck in that thought that oh it's just a genetic disease it's a you know mutation a disease of mutations um but it's not really it's a disease of, of mutations but what is guiding those mutations is actually sort of chronic damage and also this imbalance between sort of what promotes cancer and what what stops cancer, much of which comes back to nutrition. Because if you have sort of excessive nutrition, you're going to allow these sort of diseases to fester because they're going to be high growth promoting situations. So I, I, I put it sort of like the seed and the soil. That is, there's a cancerous seed in most of our cells of our body because most cells in our body can become cancer. But if it doesn't have the proper soil, it won't grow. So what has happened, what has changed in the last uh, sort of 20 years is that uh, as we became sort of more overweight and type two diabetes increased, that, uh, you know, has allowed the sort of cancerous seed to sort of bloom into a full-fledged fledged cancer. So that's sort of the the what the book is about. I think it's 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 actually quite, you know, it's not necessarily about how to prevent cancer or, or cure cancer. You can't really do that these days. But it's a it's it's a it's more of a science book about what cancer actually is. And you know, I actually think it's it's a really interesting story. I think it is too because it actually denies the idea that it's just a genetic. I don't like the genetic theory because it supports the victim mindset. So I have nothing yeah. to do about it and just my genetics. Yeah, and, and that sort of that whole genetic story is sort of it's actually died about 10 years ago that it's just about genetics. That that story actually died and most people didn't even realize it. I actually had no idea myself. So that's why it was so interesting to me to find out that there's actually so much more to it than than that. Yeah, actually gen the genetic theory is not just in, in, in cancer. It's also in obesity, it's also in, in diabetes. Because a lot of people are saying I'm gaining weight just because of my genetics. You're not gaining weight because you have good genetics. How how relevant is, is genetics in this in this story in everybody's story? Um, the problem with genetics is that it's true in that genetics does play a large role in obesity and type two diabetes and in cancer. But the genetics haven't changed. So if you look at 1970, so a period of time when there's very little obesity in North America, for example, the genetics haven't changed a lot from 2020 to 1970, right? But the obesity mm -hmm. has gone like, you know, way up and type two diabetes has gone way up. So therefore, if you've made a huge change within a single generation, well, it's not purely genetics. You can explain the differences between two people by the difference in the genetics, but you can't explain the difference in the entire population. Like you can't say, if you look at China, for example, in 1980, 
the prevalence of type 2 diabetes is like 1% in China. Now it's like 11%. So you have a tenfold increase in type 2 diabetes, and obesity is much the same story, right? You've got a huge, massive increase in type 2 diabetes and obesity within sort of 30, 40 years. Well, that's not genetic because the genetics of China have not changed at all in those 40 years, right? Because you've only got one generation. It's not like, you know, several thousand years where you can expect the mm. genetic change. So that's not a genetic problem. That's a dietary problem. And to say that, uh, you know, to say that, oh, it's my genes. Well, you know, it's not entirely true because it's always a combination of your genes and the environment that you put it in. And that's what's important uh, about it, because then you can do something about it, right? If you say, oh, it's my genes, it's my genes. Well, you don't think you can do anything about it because you can't yeah. change your genes. I can't change my genes. But if you say, well, it's both genes and the environment that we're in. So therefore, can't do anything about your genes. Forget about it. Let's focus on what we can do something about, which is the, the environment, the diet, the lifestyle, and that sort of thing. Which I think is the is the major factor. It's it's not the genes. I mean, if you have a family history of diabetes and you're concerned about your eating and you're doing uh, fasting and you're you're following some sort of a low carb diet, you're avoiding processed food. Why on earth would you get diabetes? Yeah, you know, I think the world is not that even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that this is this is what's important is that it's not to understand that it is not just a genetic problem means that you take yourself out of that victim mindset, which is that, Oh, uh, you know, I can't do anything. I'm just going to suffer with it to sort of an attitude where you say, well, let me beat this. It might be hard, but I'm going to help, right? As a physician, I will help you beat this. That's my job. Whereas if it's a purely genetic problem, I can't say that. You know, I can give you treatments and medications at best, but I can't actually make you any which, better. Which most, most doctors do. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can do something about it. So that's that's the goal. Yeah, it actually works. It actually works. I have just one last question. Okay. Which is about uh, insulin resistance manifestations in, in, in different disease that, that most people don't recognize as insulin resistance, like uh, like PCO, like hypertension how 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 can they they actually um, recognize th these manifestations as insulin resistance and should they approach it exactly the same way as we approach uh, diabetes or, or or insulin resistance even if they don't they don't recognize it as as such yeah something like so um i prefer instead of insulin resistance i like to use the term hyperinsulinemia yeah. um which is you know we know that in insulin resistance you have high levels of insulin but the reason i think it's a much better term is that when you say it's a disease of too much insulin which is hyperinsulinemia then you immediately have the solution if too much insulin is the problem let's lower insulin and how are you going to do that well you can eat a low carb diet you can do intermittent fasting you could do even a very low calorie diet for example they will all work because you're you, you see the problem which is too much insulin and you're working towards lowering it as opposed to the term insulin resistance which doesn't really tell you how you're going to reverse that whole uh disease so you know i think that it's important just to recognize that all of these diseases are diseases of too much insulin so hypertension you know some of the cholesterol problems not ldl interestingly but hdl and triglycerides is part of the metabolic syndrome but the obesity, the type 2 diabetes, PCOS, probably the most important of them, but also things like cancer where, hey, you know, again, once you define a disease as a disease of too much insulin, you can understand, hey, breast cancer grows well with insulin because we know that breast cancer cells have insulin receptors and insulin is a growth factor. So therefore, if this is a disease that is made worse by too much insulin, hey, it should be made better if we reduce insulin. And that's the whole point of looking at it that way and saying, these are the diseases of too much insulin. So let's find a solution to lower the insulin. And this is makes sense because, you know, these drugs like giving insulin, for example, it doesn't work because you have too much insulin already. So type two diabetes, if you give insulin, well, the sugars will get better, but they're going to gain weight. So their type two diabetes will get worse. 
We know that they'll gain weight and that's, that's what happens. So I think that it's just important to recognize that a lot of the diseases that we face currently are actually diseases of hyperinsulinemia. And then you can sort of face the problem head on, which is like, well, let me design a program that to lower your insulin, whether it's low carb diets, whether it's fasting or whatever uh, you have, then it makes sense because now you're getting to the root cause of it. Well, yeah, most of these diseases we've been taught are idiopathic. We've been told that they have uh, they are they are unknown tools. I'm starting to believe that most most of what I've been told is idiopathic is actually caused by insulin resistance. We've been told that uh, hypertension is called essential hypertension because it's of an unknown cause. Uh, yeah. It's fascinating how it's it's it finally has a cause. <laughs> it's interesting because when you look at uh, hypertension, it very much is not found in people eating sort of traditional diet. So if you look at um, sort of people who are sort of following a traditional lifestyle, you know, people that, um, you know, don't eat a lot of these refined foods and stuff, their blood pressure actually doesn't rise with age. Whereas most people eating sort of a Western style diet uh, do get this slow rise in high blood pressure over time. Uh, when you study like native uh, Native uh, Americans and stuff, uh, following a traditional lifestyle, they don't have that. So even that is 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 very much a disease of sort of hyperinsulinemia. And get, it gets way better with with fasting and low carb. They actually don't need their medications anymore. That they freak out. They yeah. freak out that I'm 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 starting to be hypotensive. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. being healed. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's 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 an incredible thing. And again, the physiology has been worked out years ago. I mean, um, if your insulin falls, insulin promotes sort of sodium retention in the proximal convoluted tubule. So when your insulin falls, you actually start to diurese, which is just like a diuretic lowers your blood pressure, your blood pressure goes down. So it's like, hey, that's not that hard to understand, right? If you have too much insulin, you're retaining water and your blood pressure goes up. You lower the insulin, you start to diurese, your blood pressure goes down. Like not that hard to understand. So why don't people use it, right? This is a natural intervention, not something that's like a drug. So it's weird how people are more afraid from fasting than they're afraid of, of drugs. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird for me. I like listening to your lectures a lot. I'll link your your uh, your channel in uh, in the description. I have like the obesity code, the diabetes code, and the cancer code. These are your, your yeah. three books. I highly recommend diabetes and obesity code for anyone who wants to to like understand everything they need to know about fasting. And I do recommend the cancer code because I know it's 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 gonna be very interesting. Um I'll link your uh, your Amazon links for the um, for the books. Sure. Where I yeah, got my where I got my copy. Uh, also your website. They yeah, can, and the website is, the um, uh, yeah, it's called thefastingmethod.com. So if they go on there, there'll be a link to the books. You can you can find it there as well. Yeah, check check out YouTube. Uh, my channel is just called Jason Fung. Yeah, yeah, I'll link it, I'll link it down below. I, I have to personally thank you one more time for taking the time for this and for teaching me a lot. I mean, I mean, you've taught me what I'm teaching others and this is what 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 you have to know that you're not only helping patients directly, you're helping people who can help patients from all over the world. And this is like beyond description. I cannot thank you enough for that. Oh, thank you so much. It's great to thank be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for having the time for this. And uh, I would really love to have an, another interview uh, after I read the cancer code, discuss what I'm going to learn. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a lot of questions. Okay, will do. Thanks so much. Yeah.